Hi everyone, this is Lynn with Lynn Scrap Shack once again. I'm here, I'm going to show you, give you a tutorial on making these miniature roses. I've had a lot of people ask me, how do you do them? Um, what you see here is everything that I use. The um, This is a, a punch, this is what it looks like. I don't know that you can even find this punch anymore, it's by EK. Um, there's one similar to it. It's a little more defined, but not cut in as much that you could probably use to make it work. But it's, um, this is the, the punch and the, and the flower just punched out. You can also use the retro punch. It comes out a little bit different. Um, this is a small, I think they call it the medium. It's still, you can still use that. So, and this is also by EK. This is, uh, the punch. I cut out quite, I'm not the, I don't know how well the color is today. It's overcast outside so it's not real bright. This is a uh, pale pink. This is the finished flower. Alright, these are the stages of the flower. This is one layer. This is two layers, three layers, and four. This is, or this is, or oh, sorry, three right there. This is four layers. You can stop where you want if you like that small. Stop there. So let's get started on what, what all we need. I use the uh, McGill Stylus. You can purchase them at McGill. There's a set of these. I think a couple of things with it. I think they're about $15. Go on their website and get those. My tweezers. Always something small. My Scotch Quick Drying Tacky Glue. This, of course, is my toothpick that I use to roll them. Um, those are real cheap. You know where to get those. And I didn't ink these, but if you want to ink them, I'll, you just ink the edges of them, real simple, and go from there. Um, you can use white paper and ink them, whatever color you want. Seems to be what I use quite often, but I had pink and I'm using pink today. Uh, let's get started. Move this stuff out of our way. This first thing you do, of course, is going to be to punch out one of these little jewels. Sorry, you need scissors, too. And then I clip into it. You're going to clip into it strictly to make sure that uh, you have, it's going to come up on the edges, come on some. Even with the retro, oh, the retro punch, you probably don't have to do that to it. Uh, go from there. I use a small to my stylus because it is a small one. And I start just rolling and, and it starts bringing up the paper giving a little form to it dimension um, this right here this black is this the it's the back side of a mouse pad it's what you need something like that to be able to that gives um, a girlfriend sent me uh, something else that I haven't used it yet tried it out but anything that's going to give you some give and this is what you do you just it cups it like so I don't know, well, you can see this is very small. Um, if you don't want to make them, you can buy them from me. You can send me an email at Lynn's Scrap Shack, L I N N S C R A P C H A C K at yahoo.com. Check out my fan, uh, fan page on Facebook or my blog spot, Lynn's Scrap Shack. See how I just take it and I'm rolling it. I'm just squeezing it around it, then I roll it around. This is the first step of the first layer. So, like this. So, to kind of push them together, make sure they're going to go. Sometimes come down here at the bottom. And I make sure it's going to give in some. Just a little extra, a little extra push. Take my glue. It's a mess. I usually, uh, when I'm making flowers, where I think I usually store it upside down like that, where the glue stays at the bottom, or the top rather in this case. And let's unstick it, unclog it. You take it, and you're going to put glue in four of them. 
I say four. You put it all five if you want, but you don't need to because one of these is going to go up and not around anything. Take every other one, like so, wrap it around it, like this. Once you get it together, you can start shaping it. I just sort of kind of roll it, try to get it a little closer together. I don't know if you can see that. Just roll it. I suggest making several one layers at a time. Let them dry uh, real good and go back and do the second layer. And I say that because if you don't, because it's still wet and it's going gonna, it's gonna to get soft and you will end up with, because I didn't wait for these, some of these that are not, like you get pushed down a little bit. They're going to push down anyway because you're going to push on the top, but if you let it dry some at this point if you want you can take your tweezers push it back just a little bit like as if it's opening up let's see Does that helps some Make sure it stays together. And that's your first layer. Because I was doing the video, I did extra layers already. So this one, excuse me, it's already got the layer. It's already dried for you. So the next step is to add the second layer, which is the same thing. You cut into it you're going to do the same thing as you did the first time cut into it turn it over or depending on what if it was two sided one side I want the texture side out you're going to just shape it up give it the curl in and again roll it each one like so okay this one's finished we have this one rolled up we take this your dried one and you're going to I mean you can't get too much glue but a lot of glue is not going to hurt it it gives it makes it stiff and uh, makes this flower hold up for you better this one you put whoa but not quite that much glue yeah we got a little carried away and We'll just spread it around a little bit. Like so. Take your center flower, first layer, and again you're going to place it in the middle. And again you're going to do every other one. bit to get it in there and you see I had too much too like I said you can't get too much it's not going to hurt it on this one and you're going to rotate it going to keep it together glue it hold it to the glue sticks because I have so much on here I want to go ahead and These are a little bit thinner than the other ones, and I can get in there better. And just fold it back a little bit. Just a tad. As if it's opening up. Alright. There's your second layer. Alright. Alright, we have our second layer. And we want to add our third layer now. 
Our third layer is going to look like this. All we do with this one is we clip it and sorry I'm not inside the camera there. I have to keep checking myself. It's like so. We do the same thing. Work it, make it pliable on the edges like so. So it curls up, gives you a little bit of. Then you turn it over. Once you turn it over, this is the side that's going to be showing. Do it right in the middle. Right in the middle. Like so. Now let's add a little bit of glue. I say a little bit. <laughs> Not like I did a while ago. You want to come up on the edges some because that's what's going to hold it. And try to give it every other one. Alter it. Put it in there. And you're going to fold it up, just up around it. And as you're folding it up, you're going to feel the back of these stick out. You want to try to work it in. Work it where it's going to not just stick out, but fold them in some. Push them in. And because you've worked with it, sorry. Because you've worked with it and uh, used the styles on it, it's going to be a little more bendable, flexible. See, as you mess with it, it'll bend this down. So that's one reason why I say make sure it's dry. Use a dry before you go to the next layer. It's pretty. It's fairly simple. You just have to work with it. Be patient. And uh, it's a little off. I don't want to take it off and do it again. But you need to try to make sure it's centered good. And all right. There we go. And there's your third layer. You can stop there if you want, or you put another layer on, which is the same thing. So you do the same thing to it, and you glue it down, like so. And you have that. This is four layers. This is three. Again, it depends on what look you're you're going for, a fuller one, a smaller one. This one's still wet, though. And you just take your tweezers and you fold over the edges that you want it to appear as if it's opening up. Give it that. Some people like to add, after it's all dry, your glimmer mist, uh, glossy accents to make it look like it has a dew drop on it, which is a really cool effect. I've done that before. I've done the glimmer mist. I usually use the just the clear pearl just to get a little bit of a glitter. And that is it for that. And then this is your four layers right there. That's how you make a rose. Any questions, leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, again, my email is L-I-N-N-S-C-R-A-P. S-H-A-C-K at yahoo.com That's Lynn's, uh, Lynn Scrapshack at yahoo.com My block spot is L-I-N-N-S-S C-R-A-P S-H-A-C-K Lynn's Scrapshack at uh, dot blogspot dot com And uh, Again, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for stopping in and checking out our tutorial. Bye.